Hi everyone, I'm Neil Snape and I'm going to show you once again how I convert my images uh, directly to black and white in Lightroom. Subscribe to my channel and that way I can keep you up to date with the latest tutorial. In the, in the grid view, you can filter your selections by the number of stars, by the colors that you give to your selections, and or of course picks, unpicks, or rejects. Um, I use the use stars, it's a little bit easier, and stars are written into metadata as well. Um, so if something happens to catalog, at least the stars are still in the uh, in the images and the selections. So you can I've already pre-selectioned this image. You can double click on it to, to take it up to full view and get an idea of what what you'd like to see. Uh, this type of image has a fair amount of contrast. Uh, it's done deliberately and if I take a close-up look in the eyes you will see how the light was done and it was done with a, a large octa with a, a smaller um, a large but um, a direct bowl with with barn doors on it. The the direct light gives it a sharp light with specular highlights, which you can see up and down in the nose and in the skin area. And the large um, the large light actually just uh, fills in those areas. So let's take that back down to sorry. And you can press D for to take you into the develop module go to a, a virtual copy that's already cropped but there are no color settings um, to this image whatsoever and the way if I'm going to start to do a black and white is I start off by adjusting in order of that they are visually in the panels with the first basic panel and I actually um, press V to take it to black and white or click on black and white here or click on white black and white here makes no difference and you can see that it has a certain um, range of tone when all of the black and white controls are flat in a previous tutorial I showed you that if you have your preferences set not um, not checking the uh, auto mix black and white these will remain at zero in which case you can go back and adjust the colors and the, the amount of bias of the um, t tonality of the the grays in each um, color zone. So in more cases than, than not, I actually reduce the color temperature. And you can see that what that does is it's it's actually influencing the, uh, the bias of the colors in the original in black and white before it's converted to black and white. And then you can take the, the tint slider and see what that does. In this case it's making, you can see that if I go too far in one direction it completely um, blotches up and actually is posturizing out. That's got to do with the skin tone, the color of light and also the color temperature that I've already set. So I'll come out here until it looks about right and I think that looks good. Then go down to your next slider and start to play with the the lightness. Now contrast in this case if you take the contrast up too high you're going to see that you're going to get pretty rough skin and our hair is going to block up so I'll probably take that one down for now. Highlights same thing so you're just looking for a, a specular highlight but not killing the detail. You can look at your histogram as well and there are indicators telling you what is happening. Since I see that the black is it's not lit up yet so it's just perfect at this case, on this case where the black is and the white you can see there's not much in this room. You can adjust your highlights when the cursor turns into this uh, double-sided uh, arrow and you just click and you can you can drag and move that around I don't use that I just simply go into the um, sliders that are below and I might expand that but you want it too light that you're starting to lose that graduation the reality 
that where you need only the specular highlights to go up and not necessarily the rest. These sliders are in the order of what's inside of the image for the highlights, what's inside of the image for the shadows. And the two next ones are the white and black clipping point. So that's where you're going to, to end all of the data, whether or not it's inside or you leave space around it. So in the shadows, I don't know where I'm going to go exactly with that. The blacks, I don't think I really want to clip. And you can see that when I do that, when I slide, if you look at the top here, the indicator, when there is clipping, it will become highlighted. You might want to take up the clarity a little bit. And you can see that it's clipping a little bit into the blacks, but that's not really much of a problem. Clarity is actually mid-tone contrast. And the amount of, of difference when you use clarity usually is only in the extremes. So having a little bit of uh, clipped blacks or even clipped whites at times is not that much of a problem. You go into your tone curve next and there you can start to adjust the sort of finer details of what's inside of the image. And this is not supposed to affect very much the, um, the black clipping point. Of course any extremes will do so. And your favorite place to go, let's take this back down to fit. And this is the way that you really create the look in the image, look and feel. And you can see that because I turned the image quite blue, that the red is not making any difference in here at all. And you can see the first point that's really changing is the orange and is the lips. Now, I wouldn't want to make them go light. It's quite abnormal and I wouldn't want to make them go black as neither because it's it's making it it's a little bit harsh so this one you might take down just uh, just a little bit next one is yellow now it's probably going to change a lot now what's happening is it's making a bias and it's changing whatever is considered yellow you're taking the values of that yellow down in the conversion I quite like what it does when it's dark, but it gives it very blotchy skin. There, there will be no models that want to look like that. So you have to be very careful if you're going to go for an effect to make something high contrast, but at the same time, anything in those lines. Now the, the white that's created in the background is quite interesting. It makes it a higher contrast. So that's really a, a choice. I might just take it up a little bit because you, your eyes always go to the points of the highest contrast. So if I eliminate the mostly the background, and she's got green eyes, so they go a little bit lighter, you start to end up with some interesting details. And that's about it. And these two, they don't have any difference. So if you double click on them, that'll take them back to zero. And I think everything's good. Now, let's go back up to the first panel and just play now because we've set the color channels to something else and that way I can actually see what that what my what my bias of the tint is actually doing in this ah that's that that was nice that was made it really sharp and a big difference take down the highlights you can see that taking it down is not such a bad thing we might be able to take this down a little bit and take the exposure up a little bit more. And that's not bad at all. Often the clarity I find it's best to add very little here and actually then just use your brush with clarity on just the areas that that you want affected rather than the entire image. I was just using my scroll wheel just to increase the brush size, but you can also use the same shortcuts as in Photoshop. If this is the, the control set you are happy with, Command Shift N, Preset Tutorial 4, um, Black and White, um, Beauty, and you can check whichever settings that you want to use in here. 
I, I uncheck the um, graduated filters um, because if I apply this to other images, I don't want it applying specific uh, brush strokes or gradients. And that's done. Now, if you want to just make this image just a little bit better, Command E to make it bigger, press K, or it's called Iris, no, Dodge. The other ones are actually from Adobe that are in there, which I've never used, but. And I'm just going to run that over the eye. And you can see that my settings are less contrast. Um, set up the highlights and increase the clarity. I think I'm going to brighten them just a little bit too. That's about it. If you have any small blemishes, I have this fantastic new tool. You just click on the blemishes and it will find a point that's of equal contrast. If you can, if you have a longer shape, you can actually just click and drag and it will do the same thing and pick off from another area. Fantastic. Now, let's go back and take a look at this. If you press the back slash key, you will see before and after. Well, that's how I uh, start from zero with black and white conversions in, in Lightroom. I go through the all the controls in the basic panel, temperature, tint, uh, exposure, contrast, clarity, um, black and white, clipping points, highlight and shadow. Usually in the tone controls, I don't use those uh, very much at first. I prefer to go into the black and white section and change my bias of the um, color channels because that great, greatly affects the, uh, the contrast overall anyways. So then you have to go back into the tone controls, readjust those. Then you go back to the basic and just play just a little bit more. If you have any questions while you're doing this, it's always a good idea to press um, Command N, which is a uh, create new snapshot. Give it a name if you like. And that way you can always come back to it if you think you've gone too far. And you can come back to that snapshot where you were and use that one. You can make as many snapshots as you like throughout the process. It's always a good idea. So subscribe to my channel and I'll keep these tutorials coming to you. Bye.